reading through the Bible in a year, October 20th, 2 Kings chapter 1, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, Daniel 5, and Psalms 110 through 111. Since we're in a new book, let's go ahead and read the introduction. 2 Kings continues the saga of disobedience begun in 1 Kings. Uh, Spoiler alert, this continues for a while. Opening about 850 BC with the conclusion of Elijah's prophetic ministry in Israel and the beginning of the work of his successor, Elisha, Israel spiraled downward in faithlessness, ultimately being defeated and dispersed by the Assyrians in 722. Judah, the southern kingdom, had several kings who trusted God and attempted reforms. We've seen them on the charts I showed you before. But after many years of God's warnings through Isaiah and other prophets, Judah's sins were punished by Babylonian conquest starting in 605 and ultimately in the fall of Jerusalem in 586 BC. The people were exiled to Babylon for 70 years, as prophesied by Jeremiah in Jeremiah 29.10, which we've read. God remained faithful to his covenant despite his people's faithlessness. The author of 2 Kings is unknown. Let's begin. Now, Moab revolted against Israel after the death of Ahab. And Ahaziah fell through the lattice in his upper chamber, which was in Samaria, and became ill. So he sent messengers and said to them, Go, inquire of Baal Zabub, the god of Ekron, whether I will live from this sickness. But the angel of Yahweh said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say to them, Is it because there is no god in Israel that you are going to inquire of Baal Zabub, the god of Ekron? Now, therefore, thus says Yahweh, you shall not come down from the bed where you have gone up, but you shall surely die. Then Elijah departed. So the messengers returned to him, and, they, and he said to them, what, why have you returned? And they said to him, well, a man came up to meet us and said to us, go, return to the king who sent you and say to him, thus says Yahweh, is it because there is no God in Israel that you are sending to inquire of Baal Zebub? the god of Ekron. Therefore you shall not come down from the bed where you have gone up, but you shall surely die. And he said to them, What what kind of man was he who came up to meet with you and spoke these words to you? And they said to him, He was, he was a hairy man with a leather girdle girled, uh, girded about his loins. And he said, Ah, it is Elijah the Tishbite. Then the king sent to him a commander of fifty with his fifty. And he went up to him. Behold, he was sitting on top of the hill. And he said to him, O man of God, the king says, come down. And Elijah answered and spoke to the commander of fifty. If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty. Then fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. So he sent again another commander of fifty with his fifty, and he answered and spoke to him, O man of God, thus says the king, come down quickly. And Elijah answered and spoke to them, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty. Then the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. It's like a pattern developing here. So he again sent a commander, a a third commander of 50 with his 50. Then the third commander of 50 went up and came down and bowed down on his knees before Elijah. And he begged him and and said to him, Oh, man of God, please let my life and the lives of these 50 servants of yours be precious in your sight. Behold, fire came down from heaven and consumed the first two commanders of 50 with their 50s. But now let my life be precious in your sight. And the angel of Yahweh spoke to Elijah. Go down with him. Do not be afraid of him. So he arose and went down with him to the king. Then he spoke to him. Thus says Yahweh, because you have sent messengers to uh, to inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron. Is it because there is no god in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore you shall not come down from the bed where you have gone up, but shall surely die. 
So Ahaziah died according to the word of Yahweh, which Elijah had spoken. And because he had no son, Jehoram became king in his place. In the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaziah, which he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? Moving on now to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Since we're in a new book, let's go ahead and read the introduction. <clears throat> this letter from the Apostle Paul was probably written shortly after his first letter to the church in Thessalonica. He had been boasting of them to other churches, telling of their faith and their love for each other in the face of persecution. Paul reminded them that God will repay their persecutors. He also addressed two recurring problems in this church. First, they were concerned that the Lord had already returned. This is called preterism. Paul urged them not to become shaken in mind or alarmed, fearing that the day of the Lord had already come. Second, he admonished them not to be idle, commanding them that, if anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. That's not full preterism. Preterism itself says... Um, that Jesus returned at the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD, but that's the, the, the idea that it had already taken place. All right, let's go ahead and go back to the text. <clears throat> Paul and Silvanus and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, as is only fitting, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of each and the love of each one of you uh, toward starting over again, and the love of each one of you all toward one another increases all the more, so that we ourselves boast about you among the churches of God for your perseverance in faith in the midst of all your persecutions and afflictions which you endure. This is a plain indication of God's righteous judgment, so that you will be considered worthy of the kingdom of God, for which indeed you are suffering. Since it is right for God to repay with affliction those who afflict you, and to give rest to you who are afflicted, and to us as well, at the revelation of the Lord Jesus from heaven, with his mighty angels in flaming fire." executing vengeance on those who do not know God and those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. These will pay the penalty of eternal destruction, away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might, when he comes to be glorified in his saints on that day, and to be marveled at among all who have believed, for our witness to you was believed. But... To this end, we also pray for you always that our God will count you worthy of your calling and fulfill all your good pleasure for goodness and the work of faith with power so that the name of our Lord Jesus will be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all the notes to hear. Let's move on to Daniel chapter 5. Belshazzar, the king, held a great feast for 1,000 of his nobles, and he was drinking wine in the presence of the thousand. When Belshazzar tasted the wine, he said to bring the gold and silver vessels, which Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem so that the king and his nobles, his wives, and his concubines might drink from them. Then they brought the gold vessels that had been taken out of the temple, the house of God which was in Jerusalem, and the king and his nobles, his wives, and his concubines drank from them. They drank the wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Suddenly, the fingers of a man's hand came out and began writing opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the back of the hand that did the writing. Then the splendor of the king's face changed, 
and his thoughts alarmed him, and his hip joints went slack, and his knees were knocking against each other. The king called out loudly to bring in the conjurers, the Chaldeans, and the diviners. And the king answered and said to the wise men of Babylon, Any man who can read this writing and declare its interpretation, if he can declare it to me, will be clothed with purple. Again, the purple is the, the sign of royalty and authority. And have a necklace of gold around his neck and rule with power as third ruler in the kingdom. Then all the king's wise men came in, but they could not read the writing or make known its interpretation to the king. And all, excuse me, then King Belshazzar was greatly alarmed, and the splendor of his face changed further, and his nobles were perplexed. The queen entered the banquet hall because of the words of the king and his nobles. And the queen answered and said, O oh, 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 king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts alarm you, or the splendor of your face be changed. There is a man in your kingdom, in whom is a, a spirit of the holy gods, and in the days of your father, illumination, insight, and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, were found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father the king, set him as the chief of the magicians, conjurers, Chaldeans, and diviners. This was because an extraordinary spirit, knowledge and insight, interpretation of dreams, explanation of enigmas, and solving of difficult problems were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Let Daniel now be summoned, and he will declare the interpretation. Then Daniel was brought in before the king, and the king answered and said to Daniel, Are you that Daniel? who is one of the exiles from Judah, whom my father the king brought from Judah. Now I have heard about you, that a spirit of the gods is in you, and that illumination, insight, and extraordinary wisdom have been found in you. Just now the wise men and conjurers were brought in before me, that they might read this writing and make its interpretation known to me. But they could not declare the interpretation of the message. But I personally have heard about you, that you are able to give interpretation and solve dis- uh, difficult problems. Now, if you are able to read the writing and make its interpretation known to me, well, you will be clothed with purple and wear a necklace of gold around your neck, and you will rule with power as the third ruler in the kingdom. And Daniel answered and said to the king, Let your gifts remain with you, or give your rewards to someone else. However, I will read the writing to the king and make known the interpretation to him. O king, the most high God granted the kingdom grandeur, glory, and majesty to Nebuchadnezzar, your father. And because of the grandeur which he bestowed on him, all the peoples, nations, and men of every tongue feared and were in dread before him. Whomever he wished, he killed, and whoever he wished, he kept alive. And whomever he wished, he raised up, and whomever he wished, he made low. But when his heart was raised up, and his spirit became so strong that he became arrogantly, he was deposed from his royal throne, and his glory was taken away from him. He was also driven away from the sons of men, and his heart was made like that of beasts, and his place of habitation was with the wild donkeys." And he was given grass to eat like cattle, and his body was drenched with the dew of the sky until he knew that the Most High God is the powerful ruler over the kingdom of mankind, and that he sets it up over whomever he wishes. To you, his son, Belshazzar. I restate that, verse 22. Yet you, his son, Belshazzar, have not made your heart lowly, even though you knew all of this, but you have raised yourself up against the Lord of heaven. And they have brought the vessels of his house before you. And you and your nobles, your wives and your concubines have been drinking wine from them. And you have praised the gods of silver and gold, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which do not see, hear, or know, But the God in whose hand are your life breath, and all your ways you have not honored. Then the hand was sent from him, and this writing was inscribed. Now this is the writing that was inscribed, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Upharsin, or Parson, as read in other translations. This is the interpretation of the message. Mene 
God has numbered your kingdom and put an end to it. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balances on the scales and found lacking. Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given over to the Medes and the Persians. Then Belshazzar said the word, and they clothed Daniel with purple and put a gold necklace around his neck and issued a proclamation concerning him that he now would be the third powerful ruler in the kingdom. And that same night, Belshazzar the the Chaldean was killed. So Darius the Mede received the kingdom at about the age of 62. Bringing up the rest of the notes here for you. There we go. Let's conclude today in Psalms 110 through 111. Yahweh says to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies as a footstool for your feet. Yahweh will stretch forth your strong scepter from Zion, saying, Have dominion in the midst of your enemies. Your people will offer themselves freely in the day of your power, in the splendor of holiness, from the womb of the dawn. The dew of your youthfulness will be yours. Yahweh has spoken and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will crush kings in the day of his anger. He will render justice among the nations. He will fill them with corpses. He will crush the head that is over the wide earth. He will drink from the brook by the wayside. Therefore, he will lift up his head. Now, Psalm 111. Praise Yah. I will give thanks to Yahweh with all my heart, in the counsel of the upright, and in the congregation. Great are the words of Yahweh. They are sought by all who delight in them. Splendid and majestic is his work, and his righteousness stands forever. He has made his wondrous deeds to be remembered. Yahweh is gracious and compassionate. He has given food to those who fear him. He will remember his covenant forever. He has declared to his people the power of his works in giving them an inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All his precepts are faithful. They are upheld forever and ever. They are done in truth and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and fearsome is his name. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. Good insight belongs to all those who do his commandments. His praise stands forever. That's it for today. That's all the reading and all the notes. God willing, we'll be back tomorrow. Behold the word of the Lord.